Last episode of Haya Podcast for the year, guys. Welcome back. I'm in New York with producer Matt. Yay! Here in New York, the greatest city in the world. Happy to be here. Yes, very happy to be <laughs> the here. The world tour, the American leg of the world tour has ended now. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. So Matt is here. Flew him out again, as usual. Yep. That's what we do here <laughs> on Haya Podcast. And I love it how you arrived into New York and the first thing you did was you, you you went to watch the England game, the England versus France game. It was a big game. The very first thing you did. <laughs> and Gemma flew here with him. Remember, guys, the wife, yeah, producer Matt's wife, came to New York with him, and then the first thing Matt did was abandon her. <laughs> okay? I felt so bad because we had booked tickets as well to go to the MoMA, and yeah. it's exactly the same time as kickoff. <laughs> so I dropped her there. And I walked around the block, found an Irish pub, and went and sat with a load of other Brits, watch England lose. So Yeah, and then they lost too. So would you, wouldn't you rather not watch it? <laughs> right? Why do I always seem to fly you out when there's a, when there's a football no, no. game? <laughs> yeah. How often do these games happen? In a way, though, I'm glad that they lost because if they had won, there was another game on Wednesday. <laughs> and I'm not sure I can square that. Two games in five days. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How long are you in New York for? Uh, six days. Six days. <laughs> <laughs> Fly all the way to New York to watch two football games. Yep. Yeah, I'm surprised they're still together. I'm surprised <laughs> Gemma has an issue an ultimatum. It's, foot, it's Manchester United or me. You know? That would be a hard decision for you, wouldn't it? It would be. It would be a hard decision. <laughs> oh, God, I'm so glad I don't have to make that decision. You know? Yeah, you're not a big sports guy, are you? No, I watch it. I watch the World Cup, you know. Yeah. I have other things to, to take care of. Yeah, that was the nice thing because going, because me and Gemma were meeting you and a friend um, that evening. And I was like, oh, at the least friend was the, the, the fuck buddy we yes. met. You know, yeah. you don't have to say a friend. It's oh, a Hawaii okay. girl. <laughs> if you don't know who I'm talking about, listeners, go listen to the previous episode where we interviewed uh, one of my, one of my, Friend with benefits. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're going for dinner with you in Hawaii, girl. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, at least I know there'll be no football talk at all. So first thing you say to me, oh, yeah, Kane missed that penalty, huh? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> hey, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> you watched the last 10 minutes. Oh, okay. Just walking around, uh, I don't know, where, not Lower East Side, but around Chelsea. And walking around Chelsea, we saw a bar that was open. Everybody yeah. was watching it. I said, like, oh, there's only 10 minutes left. We walked past the window, and then it was Kane taking a penalty. So, we watched it now. Were you thinking of me in that Irish pub? I was like, oh, please win. Matt's going to be grumpy later. <laughs> please win. I, I was good, actually, because normally I would be upset and grumpy, but I limited it to 10 minutes. Gemma came and met me for the last 10 minutes of the game, and then we went, and there was like a pizza place next door. We got a slice of pizza, and I felt better after that. It's good that you can compartmentalize your emotions, mm. you know? When I do this, people say, oh, it's suppressing, you need therapy. But when Matt does this, it's called being a good husband. What's the double standard here, people? Right? You can't let a game affect your whole life. No, it's right? true. Yeah. Get a slice of pizza and shut up. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. Toxic masculinity can be good. You don't have to express all your emotions. Mm. Right? I think yeah. football is this thing where it allows men to express feelings. You know? It allows British men to express their pent-up British feelings. Mm. Right? I actually agree with you. That, yeah. is, that is a, a good observation. It's the only time where you can hug people yep. and cry. There's me and this 21-year-old guy in the bar next to me. He was with his... He dragged his girlfriend there to watch it. I said, like, <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to be here. Like, go and do something fun. <laughs> but she was like, oh, no, no, we want to watch it together. And I was like, oh, that's cute. They, they, they just started dating, There's, probably. It, they they were just young. started dating. They were young. Gemma Gem was like at the start. <laughs> yeah, she, really? <laughs> she, she watched one game with me in the Euros, and she's like, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> Because like, everyone's like shouting and do you know what I mean? Like beer was going everywhere and she's like, I'm not doing that again. So once a week, you watch football to feel something. <laughs> because Matt is actually dead on the inside. <laughs> what you do with football, I do with women, you know? Yeah, oh I, I, I meet them once a week <laughs> to feel something. Hey, you do it more than once a week. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> no, no. No, once a week, Max. I'm busy, I'm busy. Yeah. So if I go out with you, just know you are the only one I'm seeing that week, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> How was your trip here to New York? Uh, was yeah, it good? It was really good, but I made a very naive mistake. What did you do this time? So, 
Uh, How many friends did you make on the flight? Oh, well, that's, made friends the, again? that's the sad thing. When I'm with Gemma, none. Because none. we're a couple, no one bothers trying to speak to you. They're mm. like, oh, you know, we don't want to bother them. They're on the road. I was like looking around like, oh, anyone want to have a chat? <laughs> <laughs> because you don't give off swinger vibes. Yeah, that'll be, that's, that's the true. problem. Yeah, I don't think we don't give off swinger vibes. How do you give off swinger vibes? You tell me. <laughs> I've never done it. Maybe you just have to like, Maybe Gemma has to be the one initiating the chat yeah. and be handsy with other people. Potentially. And she has to drop hints that you're swingers. Uh, yeah. You know? We last time we were in Italy with this other couple. Mm, yeah. We had such a great time. <laughs> you know, we just had wine and did some crazy things that I won't talk about with you here. Ha 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 ha. I think Gemma has to be the one to initiate swinger vibes. You you can't It initiate. sounds creepy if I yeah. do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're always looking for a fourth mate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, and I think it has to be the woman to initiate swinger vibes. When I did my swinging, uh, <laughs> my foursome, uh, we were organizing it through WhatsApp, right? Okay. We had a WhatsApp group. That's what happens when you organize a foursome. You need a WhatsApp group. There's no more like one-on-one -on -one texting What anymore. was the title of it? It was just emojis. Oh, okay. What? Fire emoji, dick emoji. Oh, my God. What, splash rage, emoji? Uh, no, the water droplet emoji oh, and the winky yeah. emoji. Great. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> Get so the now done. I want to text my 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 foursome couple. I don't even know what to search. I forget what emojis they were using. <laughs> so I had to like, yeah, I just but we we figured it out. I have, yeah. I have them individually safe now. We were in the WhatsApp group. We were organizing, you know, drinks, mm. right? And then the woman of the uh, the couple, the woman in the couple, chimed in. She was like, "Hey guys, uh, sorry to be uh, sorry to be upfront here, but." Are we having drinks and then are we gonna smash or are we just having drinks for fun? Because if we're gonna smash, let's have drinks near our place. I was like, oh, oh my god, nice. I like this smash. <laughs> yeah, it's it's nice. It is saved so much time. Yeah, right. The Uber to that place was cheap. It was great. We got oh, an Uber okay. XL. Oh, that's what you do when you swing. <laughs> you have to get an Uber XL. The little logistics of swinging, guys. So let, let me tell you. Let me yeah. tell you. You know, don't, if you're, you know, doing a foursome, don't make people sit in an Uber X, okay? <laughs> it's just, just be nice. Get an Uber XL, Uber Black, one of those things. Yeah. So that was what, what happened then. So that's why you need Gemma to initiate. Okay. Right? I'll remember for next time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if Gemma's into that. She's not. She's not into that? Oh, just so everyone knows, don't slide into her really? DMs, please. Really? Slide to Gemma. <laughs> no. DMs. They know you keep saying Gemma, of course. No. <laughs> They're just looking at your last name and they know Gemma's gonna get a lot of weird DMs from my fans. Because I could just like, you know, brush it away when it's in the higher pod email. I'm like, yeah. oh, that's fine. Gemma's DMs, there's nowhere to hide. Yeah. <laughs> she might not even share it with you. She might oh, be like, don't. She can just give, like, give her a bit of attention. Everybody needs a bit of attention. As long as she doesn't act on it, it's good. <laughs> okay? If you can watch your football, yeah. You know, she can have a little little DM slide action. Is that a fair trade-off? Yeah. Just don't act on it. You know? <laughs> right, Gemma? I think Gemma will agree. We can ask her when we see her later. <laughs> I'm surprised she still wants to hang out with me. After <laughs> <laughs> I, I talk about her so much <laughs> on the podcast. Gemma gets it. Gemma likes me. Yeah, she does. She yeah, likes she me does because like you. I involve her in dinners and shit. Yep. But it's like, she's like she, 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 she told me, I, I feel like I'm... Uh, I, I like getting invited to things. I don't feel like I'm a burden or there's a plus mm, one. Like a spare part. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're not a spare part, Gemma. Oh. Yeah, you're cool. You're cool. Yeah, shout out to my wife. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still together after a year of doing this podcast. What a miracle. <laughs> that is true love, people. Most difficult year of our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a podcast. That's you and your short film. Don't pin it on me. Don't you dare pin it on me. That's you putting C stands and lighting gear in your bedroom. <laughs> and then you wonder, why does Gemma keep fighting with me? Oh, is it because I have a full like RE cinema panel light set up in my bedroom? Yeah, when was. my ex-wife left, mm. I had a lighting set up in my <laughs> We're living in a studio and I had a permanent ring light set up. Oh, no, did so, you actually? Yeah, yeah. In a, a studio st place. In a studio, oh. in the dining area. Oh. It was just a ring light. It wasn't like a big soft box. It was yeah, just a yeah. ring light. Okay, I was trying to get my YouTube thing going. Yeah. But that's that's how you end marriages, guys. You have lighting in your home. <laughs> if lights are up in your home, your wife's going to leave you. So that's, that's a word of caution. Yeah. But anyways, how was the flight here? Sorry, we got, yeah. we got a tangent. No, the flight was good. 
Um, that was all fine. When we got into the immigration queue and it was quite long. That was when I did have a chat with somebody. It was quite nice. He was a the Welsh fan. Queue. Talking about football. He's like, oh yeah, where are you watching it? I was like, oh, and he's like, where are you watching it? So that was a nice little conversation. Gemma started to get a bit nervous because we saw everybody having these like physical papers for Esther, which is the like immigration thing you need to travel into America mm. and the COVID vaccination thing as well, mm -hmm. which mine's on my phone, like the NHS one. Yeah. Um, and I was like, no, it's fine. I went to Miami. No one cared. And then was just like, Matt had this attitude. Gemma told oh, me. Oh, I did. He had this attitude. <laughs> look at these guys. <laughs> you never traveled before. They, look at them. They don't travel much. <laughs> yeah. Also, I've done, I've done like, what, a couple of trips with you. And suddenly I'm this, like, seasoned, like, I know what I'm doing. It's like, come on. Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> okay. And then what happened? And then, um, so I kept saying it'll be fine. We get to the front. And unfortunately, we realized the queue we were in, the immigration officer, was doing like one person per nine that other people were doing. So she was really, not strict, but thorough. Mm -hmm. That was when I, I got a little bit of a red flag in my head. I was like, shit, have I majorly messed up here? Mm -hmm. Get to the front of the counter. And then, yeah, she was like, okay, I need both your esters, both your NHS things. I had mine. I'd forgotten to do, do Gemma's. To so, do her, to print her, to print hers them, out. Well, not even print them off, to have them on my phone. Oh. So I literally, I was like shaking almost. I went, oh, I, I, I'm really sorry. I, I don't have it. And she like huffed. She was like, fine, I'll find it. But then asked Gemma so many different questions about like getting in and like, like what, what we're questions? doing. Uh -huh. Well, what we're doing, um, what's her job? How much money are you bringing in? What are you planning to do? Like, it was pretty intense. And then I just, I, I kind of realized, I was like, I brought it up with you at dinner. I was saying, oh, I couldn't believe how stressful it was. Like, you know, you know who prints out stuff? Mm -hmm. And you had the act, like opposite attitude to me. You were like, no, yeah. you need to do that shit. Yeah. Like, well, why did you do that? <laughs> so why is that? Why were you like thinking, you know, you should print everything out? See, because why this happens, I've traveled a lot. Yeah, okay. yeah and you actually have. <laughs> yeah, I have. And then the thing is, White people don't get deported. No. That's a white privilege. You will never experience the joys of deportation. <laughs> you know, so you can just saunter into any country. <laughs> you know? I literally did. I just no visa, no ESTA, <laughs> no passport. I have my library card. Can I fly <laughs> my library card? White people don't get deported. They don't suspect you. I have been detained. I had a visa. I, 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 I remember I was, uh, I was stopped in the immigration queue. Uh, in 2015, 2016, I went back to Chicago to visit some friends. I had, I had Before that, I had a student visa. I, I was studying in America for five years, then I left the country. And then I got a tourist visa to come back in. And I still got detained. They sent me to this room, and everybody there was a minority of Mexicans, black people, me. Were there any white people? No, no, no white people. The, the officers, the, the, the oh, okay. officers <laughs> yeah. were white, yeah. <laughs> some of them had like oh, face tattoos. God. I'm like, why am I here? Yeah. Why am I here? Have you seen? I'm not bringing anything to the country. I'm, I have a visa. Yeah. Yeah. Why people don't get deported? So you don't have the fear. Like, oh right? That, well, you I just did. Go. For a split second, I did have that fear. Now you know how Mexicans feel. A <laughs> minority. Well, all the time. Yeah, all the time. Oh, that's really sad. And people knock on your door. You just open the door. Welcome. You know? It made me realize it is a huge privilege, actually, because even at the back of my mind, so I, mm. I knew we didn't have this stuff, but I knew I'd done it. And I was like, oh, well, what are they going to do? It never came into my mind that well, it might not let you in. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, that, not for one second. They'll send you back. Yeah. They'll That's send very you back arrogant you of me, from. actually. In hindsight, it's very arrogant. Yeah. I, I hold my hands up. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll, I'll learn. It's okay. Enjoy your white privilege. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> if you have it, uh, uh, flaunt it. Enjoy it. Yeah. What's the point? You're going to get reincarnated into a minority next, next, next lifetime, and then you'll be like, ah, oh, I wish I just <laughs> made use of my white privilege more. <laughs> ah. You know, isn't it great that when you get reincarnated, you don't you you forget your previous life because it would suck if my previous life was white and I was one of those like woke white people, liberal white yeah. people who didn't flaunt their privilege and just you know did charity work. Yeah, and then I get born as a non-white person. I'm like, ah, shit. <laughs> Why did I buy a yacht? <laughs> Why well, was I helping people build schools? Because I'm building a school right now. I have to do it now. Why did I enjoy the privilege? <laughs> so you should enjoy enjoy it, you know? Do you think like the horrible, selfish people in this world, do you think that's why they're doing it? Because they do remember from a previous oh, yeah, life. Probably. Where they didn't take advantage of it. So now mm -hmm. they're like, I'm not giving to anything to charity. Yeah, fuck that <laughs> shit. <You> only <laughs> I really wish reincarnation were real, but then I also wish you can remember shit from your past yeah. lives. 
<laughs> That'll be great. <laughs> what do you want to come back as, Matt? What race? I think I've got it pretty good, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're going to get white again? How about white yeah, male white again? again. <laughs> That's a Louis C.K. bit, isn't it? <laughs> come back white again, please. White, white again. <laughs> How about you? Um, I don't know. White, white seems pretty cool. <laughs> you know, white. Let, let's let's all be white next <laughs> lifetime. It just makes life easier. You know, you don't have to know how to use chopsticks. Just fork and knife gets you through life. You know, <laughs> you don't have to be deported. You get a nice passport. You don't have to travel anywhere. Mm. You go anywhere. You can you, it's so easy to uh, uh, go to Asia. All the women love you. <laughs> have I covered this on the podcast? That people in Asia love white men. Women in a- Asian women in Asia love white guys. Do they? Yeah. That's why I, it annoys me when I see a white incel. <laughs> I'm like, there is a solution to your problem, bro. Go to Asia. Stop wasting your whiteness. Just moping around in your mom's <laughs> basement, you fucking white neckbeards. Oh Just get a shave, get a haircut, go to Asia. Get late all the time. Don't shoot up a school. Oh. Jesus Christ. Just go to Asia. Incels should only be like non-white people. Only non-white people get to be incels. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is this is my my take for the week. <laughs> yeah. Take of the week. If you're a white incel, you're a loser. Go to Asia. Go to Thailand. Go to Bali. You'll do great there. You know. And then they just they just go on Reddit and they leave these comments. They're like, oh, I can't get women because they all go for the chats. Guess what? <laughs> Move to Asia. You become the chat. <laughs> What are you doing, man? Sometimes, have you seen like incel, white incels are also tall? I'm like, what are you doing? (laughs) What are you doing? (laughs) To be fair, that would annoy me too. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It annoys me to no end. Mm. It's cheap in Asia. You can live. You don't need to get a good job. Just just work any coffee shop. You'll get like pussy out the door. (laughs) You be Drake. White people become Drake when they go to Asia. (laughs) Right? Yeah. Why are you these in, 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 over here just, you know, complaining about women not wanting to sleep with you? Right? Just go to Asia. Everybody sleep with you. For free. For free. <laughs> you don't even have to pay. That's Matt's next life. After Gemma <laughs> leaves him. He's going to remember this on the podcast. And be like, oh, Nigel did mention something. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> going to be a chat. I hope that doesn't happen, but it would be funny if just like I'm trying to convince you to tour Asia all the time and bring me out. (laughs) Where are we going next? (laughs) Listen, with all my fame in Asia, I do about the same as the average white guy. Seriously, in Bali, in in, in people where I'm, I'm known, I do about the same as the average white guy. Average white guy. So you need to have like 7 million subscribers if you're Asian. If Matt and I go to Asia... Like we'll do about the same. We both have two women of each arm. That's that's it. <laughs> that's it. And I have to have like this this fame, this success, yeah. this funny <laughs> man just shows up. <laughs> I've hey. done nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Show up without your passport, yeah. without your Esther. <laughs> then welcome, sir. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, tell that to Gemma. I'm saying, I'm wanted, Gemma. <laughs> just not in this continent. Of the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to leave Bournemouth and go to Bali. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, why are you going to Bournemouth? Go to Bali. What are you doing? <laughs> Bournemouth versus Bali? Yeah, but we've got family in Bournemouth. And yeah. if we're going to have Who a family... Needs family? Oh Who needs family? Who needs family? To help raise children and things. Be, it's Just good. hire some maids in <laughs> Bali. It's way cheaper. What are you doing? You will have a live-in maid if you go to Bali. Yeah. I guarantee it's very common there. It's very cheap. They live, you can have two. Okay. You know? One live in to take care of the chores, one to take care of the kids. You have such a nice life. Fly, if you feel bad, fly out your family once a month, once a year <laughs> to visit you in Bali. They would love to come too. Yeah. They would love to come. Bournemouth and Bali. If you don't know, <laughs> listeners, Bournemouth is a little seaside town in the UK. When I say seaside town, hey, see, in the that UK, sounds nice. That it sounds, sounds nice, lovely. but it's not nice. It is nice. It's full of old people. I performed there. It's a lot of old people. Oh, where did you perform? <laughs> I don't remember now. Some communist-looking poverty building. <laughs> the Bournemouth. Oh, that's Weymouth. That's Weymouth. Different. different. Oh, that is different. The Weymouth that's, that's Pavilion. Different. Yeah, that's different. That's different. But Bournemouth is not far off. So I, I went there. I remember it was cold. Yeah. It was foggy. 
The beach was grey. Oh, we got a good beach. No, really? no, no. I'm going to fight you back on that one. There's a good beach. When British people say they have a good beach, no, I it always <laughs> treat them with scepticism. Yeah. It's like a child saying they're good at drawing, you know? It's like, oh, mm, you uh, think that's what a drawing is? You think that's what a painting okay, is? Okay, wait. If we had the weather of a Miami or something, it would be on the same level. But we, we don't. Yeah. You, you just, just... But, but it's white, what I'm saying is white sand, no stones or anything. Like, the sea's nice. Really? I'll take you. You're going to come down. We're going to do a podcast in Bournemouth. We've already discussed it. You're going to come stay with us, and we'll take you around the, the sites in Bournemouth. That's when you know my career is going nowhere. <laughs> you know, from New York, Miami, Amsterdam, Bangkok, <laughs> Bournemouth. <laughs> Shit. If I do a podcast in Bournemouth next year, you know my career hasn't gone anywhere. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to move to L.A., Bournemouth. You're just on your Please. phone to your radio, like, what the yeah. fuck's happened? <laughs> I would take a train. Yeah. Oh. No, you could drive. It's a nice drive. You've got the new forest. A Sandbanks forest. is nice. Yeah. All right. All right. If I ever do a podcast in Bournemouth, you pay me. Okay. <laughs> you pay me to show up there. Your day rate's going to be a lot more than mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take your day rate. That's fine. Yeah. I just need, okay, we, we'll see if we can plan something, but yeah. if you can make it, if you can shoot a podcast in a Bournemouth specific location where you can see the beach, okay, maybe I'll oh, think about it. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. If you yeah. can try to use that podcast to convince people Bournemouth is ver- worth visiting. Yeah. <laughs> we'll try. Last week, we interviewed uh, my, my fuck buddy, right? Her, She's very, very cool. Very fun yeah. to hang out with. And she told me something that we didn't cover on the podcast. She used to date someone in New York, like very seriously dating, but it ended uh, in a terrible way. You know, I'm not going to give too much into the detail, but it was very traumatic for her. So she lives in a different city, not New York. So she would come to fly over to see him maybe, I don't know, a couple times a month or something. And then when it all ended, she took therapy. And the therapist told her, you know, because you're in New York, you have all these memories there Mm. with this person. I want you to go to these places by yourself. The same places you went with this uh, date you had. You want to go, I want you to go to these places by yourself and then just sit there and then reset. Yeah. Reset the emotion of the place. Mm. So that place is no longer associated with the guy. And at first I was like, oh, that's a pretty good idea. But then I thought about it a little bit more. I was like, that's, that's kind of that's kinda funny too because it can only work if you're dating someone in a cool city that you don't <laughs> actually live in. Like a place you visit. Yeah. I think back to how would I reset my life when my ex-wife left? Mm. We were living together in London. What, do I have to go into a Tesco and reset in a Tesco? <laughs> Just have a nice glass of wine and read a book in a Tesco? And then leave Tesco? <sighs> <laughs> yeah. The emotion is positive again. Cleansed. <laughs> Where else can I reset? The bus stop? Huh? Shepherd's Bush Station? Yeah. Oh man, there's gonna be so many tube stations. Yeah, all the tube stations reset. Sit there. <sighs> so much wine as well. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to carry a glass of wine right on the tube. <laughs> that advice cannot apply to everyone. Yeah. Where else do I go? Waitrose, the grocery store. Yeah. Waitrose, uh, Wagamamas, <laughs> KFC, <laughs> Heathrow Airport. <laughs> where else do we go? Where else do people go in London? Prep. Pret, Pret Manjay, <laughs> Waterloo Station. Yeah, how? Yeah, that that doesn't really apply. But I think it's a good idea. Mm. You know, have you done? You're never broken up with anyone. <laughs> you haven't lived life. I think you and Gemma might need to get, do a sabbatical. It's you know? sabbatical. You need to know what toxic relationships are like. <laughs> you know, your relationship is too wholesome. Oh. It's too wholesome. There's no toxicity. <laughs> Where's the fun? Yeah. Being toxic is so fun, isn't is it? it? Yeah, because that's so you can create so much content. You can talk about it. It makes you interesting, you know. And a lot of times we say people are toxic, but the reality is they're just not. They're just not into us, mm. you know. And we call okay. them toxic because it makes us feel better. Yeah, you know. So you need a bit of toxicity in your life, right? <laughs> if you and Gemma broke up, where would you do your reset? Where oh, would you go? Man. Oh, I don't even want to think about it. It'd be so sad. You want to think about it? Well, it'd just be like clapping, I, know. I guess. Like it would be clapping. like, uh, oh, you don't have to reset at the pubs where you watch football because you're going there alone. <laughs> yeah. So you don't really have I'd to. I'd still be there. That. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to change. 
No need to reset. No, dude, I just wouldn't go home. <laughs> <laughs> just live at the pub. <laughs> oh, yeah. She did a reset in New York. Yeah. By herself. I wasn't in I wasn't, you know, in her life yet. She didn't she didn't know me yet. Oh, it, oh okay, okay. Yeah. So she already done the reset. Yeah, she had done the reset. Got you. Okay. She didn't bring me along to her reset. I'm like, hey, I will fuck you. That's it. <laughs> I'm not gonna be part of your emotional baggage, woman. I was gonna say it's not positive if you're there. <laughs> yeah. No. That's crossing the fuck buddy boundaries. <laughs> I'm not gonna be part of your healing process. I wanna be part of nobody's healing process. Mm. You know? He heal by yourself alone. <laughs> Nobody wants to be there for you when you heal. Also, did you didn't you um tell her this kind of bit around resetting? Like she told you about it. And yeah, I made fun of her for it. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I did the same shit. So sensitive. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the reset. Oh, that'd be Empire State Building resetting. And it's New York, you know. Imagine if you dated some guy. Okay, imagine if you dated some chick from Bournemouth. You did a reset there. <laughs> That's why if you want to date someone, date the I mean, who lives in a cool city. You know, mm. I think a reset is kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I'm not doing a reset with anyone. You healing, healing is important, but it's shit you do yourself. <laughs> Nobody wants to be around people who are healing. Have you been around people who say they're healing? Uh, no. Oh my god. <laughs> the amount of of like self congratulatory speaking and <laughs> It's just like masturbating. Right? It's just w- w- wankery. Yeah. You know, just, just self satisfied. I'm healing, man. I'm healing. I've never heard anyone say that like completely sincerely. Oh, I have heard a lot of people really? say that completely sincerely. I was like, okay, this dinner is over. Go, <laughs> go heal by yourself. Go. I don't want to be part of a healing process. You finish healing, then you talk to me. Yeah. Okay. I can, I'm happy to be, you know, the rebound. Okay. Not happy to be. I think that's your preference, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's, that's my preference. Yeah, <laughs> it's so great. Okay. You know, because it, 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 on their rebound, they, they won't want anything more. Yeah. You know, and then you can abuse them a little bit, but they oh, think that the, the pain they feel is from the previous relationship. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've been on the same end too. Yeah. Relax. I've been on both sides of the receiving end, giving end of, of the abuse. Rebound. Of abuse, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes abuse can be enjoyable, though. Okay. You know what I mean? Oh, Why do you think people abuse people? Because it's enjoyable for both parties. You get stuck in the thing. Okay. You know? It's 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 toxicity feels so good sometimes. <laughs> right? What, you want a wholesome relationship? You go get bread and coffee? That's what we did this morning. Ugh. It was lovely. <laughs> Ugh. Nobody wants that. You want people who ignore your texts and then... For a few weeks And you feel depressed And suddenly they send you a nude It's like oh shit <laughs> That's what you want You want mixed messages All the time It's a roller coaster You know Yeah What do you want A stable relationship <laughs> <laughs> Boring <laughs> Boring See when you went We almost got deported Yeah Your heart dropped For a second It, it lurched And it became memorable Didn't it Yeah okay. If you just breeze through You wouldn't even remember Yeah See <laughs> I want my life to be memorable. I want to have a yeah. good story. Yeah. yeah that's, that's good. Fair. Do you know if you get deported, they don't even pay for your own plane ticket back. They will have to make you buy a, a plane ticket. They'll hold on to your passport. And here's what's going to happen. I have friends who have been deported before. They will hold on to your passport. They'll buy a ticket, they'll get a credit card from you. They'll buy the ticket and then they'll put you on the flight. And then during the flight, the flight attendant will be holding on to your passport. Wow. They'll make sure you get there. Then they'll return the password back to you in London. Oh, my God. Yeah. So So if you've just done like a seven-hour flight, you basically get on the next one and seven hours back. Yeah. Yeah. Holy you shit. have to wait in the detainee center until the next flight boards. To be honest, I think you should have just let Gemma be deported. You didn't spend any time with her anyway. So there's no difference. <laughs> <laughs> there's no difference. What? For a two-hour game. If you <laughs> let her be deported, you can watch the game in peace. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, I... Did it cross your mind at all? Hmm. 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 If I deport my wife. Hmm. <laughs> it was a lot of power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe you printed the S out. Just, oops, I didn't. I printed it for me. It did look bad, but I had mine. Yeah. <laughs> you wanted her to be deported. Gemma looked to me. He's like, what? Well, you've got yours. I was like, well, yeah, when I came to Miami. Like... <laughs> 
Gemma, Matt wants, to, wants you to be deported. No, that's not true. Yeah. He wanted to watch the game in peace. I think if uh, you watch a football game, mm. Gemma will be... You should go with Gemma to watch like a rom-com or something. The holiday is coming out, so watch the holiday. <laughs> yeah. Every year I watch the holiday. Yeah, we it's already great. have this year. Really? Yeah. When? <laughs> like two weeks ago. Wow. Okay, that's fast. <laughs> I want to make a, the Asian holiday, you know? <laughs> oh my God. How, because, like, in what way? Because the holiday, you know, if you don't know the plot, it's a British woman and then an LA woman yeah. trading places. Just very white places. I want... Yeah. An Asian woman based in the Western world and an Asian woman based in the in, in Asia, Asia trading places. Wouldn't that be a yeah, funny, fun. fucking funny movie? That's a fun concept. And then there's like she, she a little bit of culture shock type stuff, yeah. s- similar to the holiday. We call it the Asian holiday or something, you know. <laughs> that that that's. But it. why remake it? Why not just have like an Asian rom com like that? Because we want to use their brand name oh, to get like okay. you know viewership. Okay. okay. So we do the kind of Asian rom com. Then we cast an Asian Jude Law in there. Cast the an Asian Jack. Uncle Clark. Roger in there. Yeah, Uncle Roger. Yeah, we get a minor character. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. They cast Uncle Roger in there. But why has anyone made this yet? You know, the Asian mm. holiday. It's ripe. It's so good. She'll go to Bali or something, you know, or Bangkok. Yeah. And then the other person will come to, I don't know. Bournemouth. Jesus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no. But that's one of my movie ideas. I want to pitch yeah. that. The Asian mm. holiday. Any, any producers out there want to make this with me? I think there's a lot of money in it. I think it'd be better than Crazy Rich Asians. You know? The Asian holiday. Yeah. I like that shit. You should have come with us to dinner yesterday at Korean barbecue. Oh, yeah. Best Korean barbecue I had in this is K-Town, New York. It was actually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much better than London. You know? Should have come. Should have come. But who knows? We're staying in Brooklyn now. Uh, I was tired. If I'm being honest, I was really tired? tired. I know you had done two shows and yeah. the podcast. Yeah, yeah. I know. What have you done all day yesterday? I went to see a show. <laughs> <laughs> what show? Little Shop of Horrors. What is that? It's really good. It's based on a film, Evan. It's like got a big puppet in it and stuff. It was really good. It's like off Broadway. It was great. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You sh- I invited you, but to be fair, you were doing a show. I had my show. Yeah. <laughs> you had a fair excuse. And I had to fuck my fuck buddy in the green room. Oh. So that was pretty fun. First time doing it. The thing is, I know you're not joking. Last show. I know you're not yeah. joking. <laughs> but I gotta do it. I gotta do it. What else? How else do you kill time? Oh, how else do you kill time? <laughs> tell me. Sex is the only way. How else? Do you, tell me. How else do you, you kill time? You are so ready for therapy. <laughs> <laughs> You're so you ready. How else do you kill time? What? Our con- well, not even out of context. What a phrase. <laughs> How else do you kill time yeah. than have sex? Yeah. <laughs> it's free. It's fun. You know? Yeah. It's it's nice. <laughs> Netflix? <laughs> really? How else? Tell me. Tell me. Give me something. Go for a walk. What? Yeah. A walk? <laughs> a walk versus sex? Are you hearing yourself right now? Are you hearing yourself right now? So if Gemma tries to sleep with you, are you going to say, no, no let's go for a walk instead? <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> that's that's not what I'm saying. But if you're thinking about, oh, you've got an hour spare, I think, oh, there's a nice park nearby. It's got some nice views. Let's go and have a walk. You know, it's got best way to see a city is walking. I maintain that. No, best way to see a city is to sleep with someone and then they have them show you the city. <laughs> right? That is your tried and tested yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then sometimes they drive you around. Sometimes they have a car. They drive you around. <laughs> that happened yeah. really, I mean, many times in many cities. Best way to see a city is to sleep with someone from the city. And then yeah. they drive you around. And they know the local spots. <laughs> what else do you do? Google. You spend your t- whole day staring at a screen. Sex is one of the few times you're not staring at a screen. Yeah. See? True. Oh, you can read a book. It's another thing to kill time. A bit book. of culture. A book. Yeah. A book is, you know, what you do after you've had sex with someone and you fly them out on a holiday with you and then you have an infinity pool and a swim-up bar and they read a book there. Okay. Yeah. Books come after sex. But there's so much time to kill. What I'm saying is it's not sustainable, is it? No. Y- okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sex just gives you so much more opportunity to this world of activities that let you kill time. That's what I'm okay. saying. How do you kill time? When I was married... I forget now what it was like being married. So how how do married people kill time? Tell me, Matt, when you're not with Gemma. Well, Tinder? I, mean, <laughs> I would go to, like, if we weren't doing anything, 
which most of the time we were, but if we weren't doing anything, mm -hmm. I would like find a nice bar somewhere and then go and have a drink and relax. Take a book and chill basically or i'd go like if there's something i want to do that i haven't done yet like go for a walk along the beach or do you know what i mean things like that so what i'm hearing is to kill time you hang out with me and the people i have sex with <laughs> see so ultimately sex is still how you kill time it's just not sex you're having it's sex i'm having and then you use me yeah i do <laughs> and you use me to kill time i use you for the sex see? benefits you are yeah. right you are right so you're still using sex to kill time <laughs> It's just you're not the participate participant in the sex. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because yeah. if I, if like you're busy, that's so true. Like I'll then I'll get a bit nervous maybe if it's like I'll go into a place I haven't been before. Or yeah, something. so See? I'll stay near the hotel. And which nights were better? The nights with me and my <laughs> fuck buddies, or the nights with you yourself at the bar reading? You tell me which was more memorable. Uh, you and the fuck buddies. See. <laughs> yeah. There's no other way to kill time. No. Proves my point. How do you kill time? Hobbies? <laughs> Who has those anymore? Hobbies? Lame. But I'm trying to go through a cleanse when I get back to London. You know, I'm trying to be on my PS5 more. I've yeah. been neglecting my PlayStation. And you've got therapy booked. I have therapy booked. I actually yeah. have a call, an initial phone call consultation with a therapist at three today. It's going to be you know, New Year, says. New Nigel. I'm going to tell her. How else do you kill time? <laughs> The PlayStation is going to be good. But, you know, knowing me, I'll probably try to fit in both sex and PlayStation. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you got to date gamer girls. Mm. You know? That, that this e flows easily. You know? <laughs> date a nice e-girl or something. <laughs> One of those, like, Twitch streamers. <laughs> oh, the Twitch streamers. I went on dates. Uh, I went on... Have I... I have went on dates with one Twitch streamer. Yeah. They're weird people, man. <laughs> They're very weird people. They have no social skills. Well, yeah, because they just they talk stay... to a screen. Yeah, and there's a bunch of simp's just talking yeah. to them, and there's know? no one speaking back. Yeah, you know what I mean, it's just them talking, and it's, it's very weird. <laughs> yeah. And they have to stream eight hours a day. I'm like, I can't do that shit, man. Mm. Yeah, it's not good, not good. But uh, shout out to all the Twitch streamer fans out there. <laughs> Love your work. <laughs> Why does that sound so seedy? <laughs> what is seedy? <laughs> They're nice people. Yeah. <laughs> They're nice people, but okay. I'm, I'm too normal to date a Twitch streamer, mm. you know? Okay. <laughs> it's good to know. In Vancouver, I was in Vancouver a few weeks ago for the tour, right? And I like Vancouver mm. because it's the only city where Asian people have more money than white people. <laughs> oh and it's God. crazy. It's, it's true. Wait, how do you know that? Because I had sex and then the <laughs> woman told me all about Vancouver. <laughs> and she drove me around. Was she white or Asian? She's Asian. Okay. Yeah. So she's biased. If she's saying that like, Asian people have more money than white people. But she brought me to the Asian neighborhoods. Oh. Yeah. And then, and then you I go see. to an expensive restaurant, all Asian people. Yeah. The, the servers are white. Oh. And it's all, seriously, yeah. <laughs> I love how you had to qualify that. No, seriously. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> have you seen that in your life, people? <laughs> the Uber drivers are white and then the riders <laughs> are Asian. Have you seen that in your life? Oh and I learned a lot about Vancouver, okay. you know? And I've seen, when Asian people have money, mm. it's always new money, you know? And it's not, it's not as great. That's why, I don't know, I have a soft spot for rich white people. Because you, you never know. You never know. They're more unpredictable. Rich white people yeah. are unpredictable. Rich Asian people, I know what they like. <laughs> they have a few Rolexes, <laughs> drive a nice car. Go on nice holidays. They probably have a very bomb, a very nice Instagram feed. I, yeah. I, you can tell what they're like. They love posting photos of them flying, flying for first class or business class. You know, they love all that shit. They love the branded stuff, the luxury, the Chanel, yeah. the Louis Vuitton. But white people are rich. You, sometimes, sometimes they flex like that, Balenciaga. But sometimes you don't even know. No, you gotta look closely. Haven't yeah, you gotta look closely. Or sometimes they flex in like very specific, specific brands you never heard of. Yeah, like yeah. rich Asians, they'll go for Chanel. They go for Hermes. Like this could be Alexander McQueen. Or yeah, something. Do you know yeah, mean? it's yeah, not. Yeah, it's yeah. Matt. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's ASOS. It's, Bo it's Bournemouth, man. It's ASOS. See, <laughs> it's top. But it shop. could be. It could be. It could be. <laughs> it could be. Very unlikely, but it could be. Yeah. Rich white people keep you guessing. <laughs> so you talk to a rich a per white person, you're like, are you rich? 
Are you rich or are you just a dick? You know, you, you don't also know. like drop it in like very subtly as well, like in conversation. Mm. Whereas, like, yeah, I know, I know what you're saying. Like the the big like branded like Louis Vuitton like yeah. trunk or something like that. It's very obvious. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think a lot of rich white people, I guess, are more subtle with it. They're unpredictable. <laughs> you know, they have more mystery about them. Not not ba- all. Like Batman. Like <laughs> if you're white, there are many more ways for you to be rich. Mm. But if you're Asian and you're rich, there's only one way for you to be. <laughs> because it's new, it's new rich, it's nouveau rich. They haven't had time to evolve yeah. richness. Well, yet. maybe you can break new ground. I don't know. I don't know. What do I do? I feel like I'm getting very, into the, some of the Asian rich. You bought yourself a Cartier watch and like a Rolex. So. Cartier is very understated. No, it is. it is. Okay. <laughs> People who like watches like it. Okay. So I watches are a good way to meet like other dude friends. <laughs> so it's like, that's, that's my football. Yeah. That's my football. You know, there's like watch YouTubers and things you can watch. I do, I do know Nico oh, no. Leonard. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I can't say. He's on my WhatsApp. He WhatsApps me sometimes. He DMs yeah. me sometimes. You know, so being white and rich is, is pretty cool, right? <laughs> I sometimes would, like, I, sometimes I you know. can be white and rich and then dress like shit. Yeah, you know, you can be that kind of white and rich. You know, just wear like a t-shirt with holes in it. <laughs> or white and rich sometimes is just about what schools you go to. True. You know, that's the subtle flex. What you do when you were growing up, did yeah. you go skiing? Right? Yeah. That kind of shit. It's true. Or just suddenly like, oh, when I was younger, I went on the, I summered, I summered in this place, you know? That's oh, yeah. How you know. That's a giveaway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Matt, Matt, one day you'll get there, Matt. <laughs> you white and rich. <laughs> Everybody should aspire to be that, by the way. White and rich. WNR. That's yeah. what I'm looking forward to. WNR. <laughs> We start that podcast. You just start a podcast with uh, about white and rich people. Only oh, interview like, white and the white and rich. The most obnoxious podcast yes. ever. <laughs> people will listen. Although a lot of entrepreneur podcasts masquerade, to be fair, as entrepreneurs, when really it's just white and rich. Oh. I would say that <laughs> the best the best cards you're dealt is white mm. and rich. You know, <laughs> Gemma is white and rich. <laughs> Let's get her on this podcast. <laughs> How do white and rich people? Kill time. She's not, Is it different? she's not white and rich. She's not white and rich. <laughs> she's white. She's white. <laughs> <sighs> so how's the baby trying coming along? Oh, how's that? Oh. We talked about it before. Just checking in on you. Such a knee jerk. <laughs> Such like a... What do you mean? Uh, There's a French well, we're, 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 we're not properly trying yet. We're waiting until we've moved into Bournemouth and are settled. And then we'll probably start trying. I think you need to get a fertility test first. Trust it's actually me. a good idea. Get, sperm yeah. counts are dropping all over the world. So you should try it. Just, I trust my guys, test. though. Just you a gut what feeling. Do you mean trust, what do you mean gut Just feeling? Gut feeling. <laughs> what is this? Is this white privilege again? No, it's not. Gut feeling? Oh, is this male privilege? I have a gut feeling. Yeah, my sperm's good, bro. My sperm's yeah. all good. Don't need to check, bro. I come in her, she gets pregnant instantly, bro. Oh. <laughs> what is this gut feeling? No, I don't, well, I don't want to jinx anything, but you know, just. I'll be the first to laugh at you. If you take a fertility test, you're like, oh, sperm shit. I'll be the first to laugh at you. I'll play this clip back. Got a gut feeling, bro. I cover the face, the sperm swims down to a pussy, bro, and just goes right in there. And she gets pregnant. <laughs> Think, well, I, I just mean like our bodily fluids are very well versed because we've been together a long time. So surely when we just flick the switch and be like, right, okay, we're you know making a baby now. That's not how it works, man. <laughs> no, but they'll understand. Like, oh, okay, we need to like work harder now. This is like the real thing. What, you think? They, like, they've, been, you're, you're, they've, they've been training for like 10 years. You think like, Jesus is going to be like, oh, this is Gemma's <laughs> house. This is familiar. I know where I'm going. I've been here before. They've got a key. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have to knock at the door Where the anything. eggs at? Where the eggs at? Where the eggs at? Oh man, this is gonna be so sad. So you're saying, <laughs> if you sleep with a random woman, they're gonna lose their way in the vagina canal. And be like, oh no, where do I go? Well, that's why I imagine statistically, one night stands are much lower than if you're in a. You oh know, god, never let Matt <laughs> fuck you unprotected. He's gonna, he's gonna use that. Like, Let's not use a condom, baby. They you don't know? know you yet. Yeah, my sperm don't know your pussy, baby. My sperm go in there, they're lost. <laughs> I was gonna go around in circles. Fuck your fallopian tubes. You can't see shit. 
Let me just come inside you, baby. Who cares? Uh, You're not Gemma. Who cares? Oh, stop. <laughs> what is this? Gut feeling. <laughs> My sperm in your pussy? They don't need Google Maps to find where they're going. <laughs> don't worry. There's no, there's no GPS in there. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> You should try it because then you try it, then you know for sure it works. Then you can properly try. I think I'm going um, yeah, because you said that over and dinner. It's the other so night. easy. You yeah, come yeah. in a dish and <laughs> hand it to a doctor. I do feel bad for like men as opposed to women. Like, it is so easy. Yeah. Like, women is like a, like, not a nice It's procedure. a whole process for yeah, women. Yeah. You know, it's complicated. You have to inject, you have to do injections and shit. That's a male privilege. Isn't yeah. It? So get it test, get, get your, get your swimmers tested, you know? No, you can try it. <laughs> yeah. You can read out the results together on the podcast. That will be the small talk I and do. A- ask the doctor. Is it true, doctor, that if I come <laughs> in a new woman, the sperm gets lost? So, oh, where is this? I'm not familiar. Can you show me the floor plan. Show me the floor plan. <laughs> I don't know this place. Why is I going to uh, someone's house? And where do I put my boots? Where's the cutlery drawer? Where's the forks and knives? I might do it just for their reaction. I would love to, if I can keep a straight face, just say this. You know, because we've been together 10 years. Like. Yeah, with Gemma, it's easy. I come on the sheets. She oh. sleeps on the sheets. It just jumps right into her vagina. Oh it's whoop. Whoop. Welcome home. Whoop. Well, this isn't going to be monetized, is it? <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it it's near the end. But the U.S. leg of the tour has ended. Mm. And thank you to everyone who has come out to all the U.S. dates. It's a big moment. It's a, it is a big moment. And sometimes you lose touch of this moment. You know, because you're busy in the green room fucking. <laughs> but you have to realize that <laughs> it's okay to celebrate nice mm. things, you know? And um, thank you to everyone who came out. This is the last episode of the podcast for this year. Oh my God, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. What a year. Matt's been good. <laughs> we'll give you a 10% raise we'll give you a 10% yeah. raise you know? <laughs> I think a 10% raise is reasonable you know because your skills over this past year your skills improved by 10% <laughs> so a 10% raise is very reasonable maybe next year if your skills improve a bit more yeah can do better lighting and sound mm, yeah maybe we'll give you a bigger raise but for uh, now 10% is about the right number no that's very fair <laughs> um, I was worried it would be a reduction <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy with that. <laughs> you still haven't broken a profit yet, so don't ask. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you a 10% raise. That's all I can do. <laughs> no, but what a year. Managed to keep this podcast going when you've been all over the place. Yes. Literally all over the world. So. I know. The listeners who keep tuning in despite our haphazard podcast yeah. schedule. And and when I was on sabbatical for a month, <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. we managed to keep it going. And I realized I don't want to have like a fully fully weekly podcast because then mm. it just feels like a job. Now I record it when I can. It's a joy because I've had time to live life. I don't know what what you listeners want, but if I do it every week, we probably have to go topical, and you know, I'm not too interested in that, you know. And I have to also maintain a YouTube channel. I'm trying to like enjoy life more and chill mm. a bit, you know. Spend more time with PS Five, <laughs> right? Now the tour is over. Maybe I can I'll meet someone special. Oh, yeah, a special fuck buddy, you know, <laughs> someone who has a car. Who has paid down her mortgage? No more mortgage, no more car payments. But the list of qualities I look for in a woman is getting longer and longer. You know, it's not yeah. good. <laughs> so if you fulfill all those qualities, let me know, listeners. See you next year. <laughs>